Welcome to Gavels Down, Voices Up with me, Rachel King. This is where we leave convention at the courtroom door and dive into your real stories, bold and unpopular opinions, and change-making ideas that really shake the legal world up and change where change is desperately needed. I'm here to shake it up, talk about unfiltered insights, and amplify voices that need to be heard. So are you ready? Let's get it. Put the gavels down and the voices up. Welcome back to Gavels Down, Voices Up. My name is Rachel King, and we are back. And today we're talking about substances. We're going to be talking alcohol and marijuana in child custody and visitation because this seems to be a very hot topic. I get questions all the time on my social media at The Lawyer King, so reach out to me there. I feel like people don't really understand the difference between a substance being legal and illegal and the effect or non-effect that it has on custody and visitation. So we're going to go through that. This is probably going to end up being a two-part episode because as I was preparing for it, I was going through and looking at all of the things and it is going to get too long. So this is going to be part one of substances, alcohol, marijuana, and child custody. Let's get into it. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's okay. Or the old adage, just because you can doesn't mean you should. We've all heard it, just because your friend tells you to jump off a bridge doesn't mean you should jump off a bridge. People all over my social medias are saying, shouting from rooftops, oh my gosh, taking over my comments section, getting in some pretty heated discussions about how marijuana is not a drug, so it doesn't count. Well, guys, alcohol is legal. I believe the science says that it's a drug and it counts. So if alcohol counts, I'm guessing marijuana counts too. Let's just play this theory out. Though I disagree and I think that the science is pretty clear on the fact that marijuana is a drug, I will also say that most of the people that are shouting and insisting that this position be heard are the ones that are lighting up their joint and insisting that they're going to smoke whenever they want, however they want, because they know. All right. Well, here's the thing. When it comes to custody and visitation, it's not necessarily about what you think is best or what you know best. Sometimes it actually matters what the research says, what other people in other industries think and say, like scientists or therapists or people that pediatricians or all of the other people, the courts, for crying out loud, judges are the ones that make the decisions. So ultimately, don't we care about their thoughts on whether alcohol, marijuana, and child custody all play together? I'm an attorney, so I would say yes. Now, as we go through this, keep in mind, I'm talking from a point of being in a child custody dispute. Certainly, if you are single and have no children and, you know, no responsibility and you don't have to get up for a job and you don't have to pay your own bills and you have nothing that is necessary and you want to smoke pot all day long because you think it's not a drug and it's not impacting your life, hats, like have at it. If you think that marijuana is going to solve all of your health problems and have you lived to 140 and that's why you do it, I am not here to tell you otherwise. I'm simply here to talk about alcohol, marijuana, and how it affects child custody and visitation. I'm going to be specifically talking about California. I know the laws vary all across the country and presumably around the world. So I'm going to be talking about California mostly, but I think some of these may be like common sense or something that you might want to at least consider or talk to an attorney in your area about if you're going through a child custody visitation situation with either yourself having an alcohol or marijuana usage or having the other parent or somebody involved in the child's life having an issue with alcohol and marijuana. So first, I just want to say drinking a glass of wine is not what I'm really talking about. Going to Jamaica on a vacation 
and getting a joint off of the little cabana boy that's walking around the beach selling you or offering you some pot. And so you take a couple of puffs in your hotel room on the balcony before you go back to your everyday life. That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm really talking about situations where alcohol and marijuana are a way of life and a significant part of the individual's life, whether it's you or whether it's somebody else involved in the raising of this child, any child. Let's just rip off the Band-Aid and say that you cannot have a drinking problem or a marijuana problem, or really a substance abuse problem and not have it come into play in a child custody and visitation issue. Now, how that really plays out and to what effect it's going to have on your child custody and visitation orders varies greatly. But the bottom line is alcohol impairs decisions and causes you to be under the influence at a certain point. Marijuana causes you to be under the influence at a certain point. In fact, even prescription drugs can cause you to be under the influence when you take them. That's why there's all of the warnings on the little bottles. When we're talking about child custody and visitation, being under the influence of anything, any substance, really is not ideal for parenting. You're not going to be able to make the best decisions or keep the best eye out or all of the things when you are under the influence of anything. Arguably, if you're overly tired, you can't either, but that's not what we're talking about. That's for another day. Today, the issue that many family law courts that I've seen and how I interpret the laws in California are if a substance use, that of alcohol, marijuana, or really anything else, starts to put somebody under the influence and then affects their ability to provide a safe environment, it is a problem with regard to custody and visitation. In fact, there's family law code 3041.5. I don't even know family law codes, but I have this one because it was researched and I had somebody do it. And now it's sitting on a paper in front of me. So family law code 3041.5 basically allows the court to consider drug use in a custody visitation or even a guardianship proceeding. In fact, under this specific family law code, the court can order drug testing. Now, there's a lot about this. And actually, I'm not a big fan of ever consenting to a drug test because I don't think that you should really consent to much. However, there are certain circumstances that it is okay. But nonetheless, it's important to know that there are laws in place that can allow a court to order a drug test or an alcohol test, because remember alcohol is a substance, when there is a concern about that usage and we are making child custody visitation orders or determining guardianship. This is important to know because if there's enough evidence put before the court, you getting in front of the judge and being like, I don't drink, I don't smoke pot, I don't do heroin, I don't do meth, I don't do it, really only gets you so far, the judge can order it. In fact, I've actually seen judges come in and be like, okay, so you say you're not a meth addict. I know we're not talking too much about meth, but the same is true of marijuana. We'll substitute marijuana so it you know works a little better. You say you don't smoke pot. But I see all of these social media posts that were provided to me of you in the background smoking your bong or smoking a joint, or however you're holding up your gummies. And so I'm concerned because these social media posts are over a period of like multiple years and they're pretty regular. And I also have these other people that admit that you smoke pot with them. And we seem to have something that you wrote or told the court a while back about how marijuana was legal and you had a medical marijuana card. So I think given all of this, I'm concerned about your marijuana use, even though you're sitting before the court today saying that you don't use drugs. In that case, the court might order a drug test or the court might say something like, so would you agree, since you don't smoke pot, to going and providing a voluntary drug test? Maybe a hair follicle or something? Are you good with that? You're good with that, right? Because you just told me under oath that you are not using it. So do you really have any problem? 
Many times the parents say, of course I don't have a problem. Of course I'll do whatever the court wants. And they agree to the drug test and then they get a court ordered drug test that they consented to. And sometimes they fail. Not always, but sometimes they fail. And now it gets used against you. You don't necessarily have to consent to a drug test. I definitely think you need to look at all of the factors. But even if you don't consent, sometimes the court has the ability under the laws and the evidence provided to order a drug test when they're making some of these decisions. And now for a quick break. This episode of Gavels Down, Voices Up is proudly brought to you by King Law Firm, Attorneys at Law Incorporated. We're not just about winning cases, we're about making a difference. Whether it's family law, probate litigation, or standing up against elder abuse, we bring experience, empathy, and excellence to the courtroom. At King Law Firm, we're more than lawyers. We're your team in your corner, advocating for your rights and making your voice heard. Visit us at thelawyerking.com and on the socials at The Lawyer King to see how we fight with you and for you. King Law Firm Attorneys at Law Incorporated, where your fight becomes our fight. Now, let's get back to today's episode. So, you want to look at the evidence. Whenever we're dealing with substance abuse and child custody, we are looking at whether the person that's using is unable to care for the child, right? Is this substance use impacting their ability to parent? Now, this can, again, happen because mom or dad brings in the evidence. It can happen because CPS or dependency court gets involved. I was involved in a case once where a child was delivered in the hospital and dependency had previously a few months before been called out to the house and they came across a lot of drug paraphernalia in the house. They didn't do anything at the time, but they had that whole history and the mom was pregnant during that interaction. So when the mother gave birth, they actually had the ability to order a drug test or get a drug test of the infant child and the infant child straight out of the womb tested positive for marijuana. And that is problematic. So dependency court got involved and said, I don't know that this is going to be the right place if you are in a position to parent, if you're making those kind of decisions, you literally have your child on and testing positive for a drug. In those cases, CPS gets involved, the court can get involved, and again, we can have drug testing go through before there are child custody and visitation orders made. Before you all panic, the court must consider the history of drug use. So this can actually work both sides. If, if one parent comes in and says, I always go with dad because I'm mom. So like, oh, mom goes in and says, dad is smoking pot all the time. He never stops smoking pot. He's a pothead. And the judge looks back and dad's like, I don't. I do not smoke pot. In fact, I'm a police officer and I've never smoked pot before in my life or whatever. I did not inhale. Anyway, you, the court will look at a history. The court must take into account the drug history or substance abuse history when making child custody determinations and weighing the evidence. Maybe in that case, they're like, well, we really don't have anything to corroborate mom's allegations. So we're just going to continue on with custody orders as they are and maybe have the record reflect that this was an issue that comes up again. Maybe at the same time, dad's like, yeah, but I don't do drugs. I don't smoke pot. And the judge is like, yeah, but you had a DUI six months ago for marijuana use. And then six months before that, you were pulled over on a routine traffic stop and there was drug paraphernalia in the car. You know, then there's the social media posts of you going to raves. So actually, I do think that there is enough history here that I'm going to consider the substance abuse in making custody and determination orders. And depending on the seriousness of the history and how much evidence can be brought forth, remember this is really evidence-based. So the he said, she said doesn't fly. You gotta get your ducks in a row if you're going to prove it. Because of course, if you do have a parent or somebody involved in a child that is using substances and can't provide the child, your biggest priority is to make sure the kid is safe. But nonetheless, if substances are the court considers them to be detrimental, they can actually find that the child is abusive or neglects parenting if they are unable to provide adequate care of their child because they're under the influence of controlled substances. So 
it's really not fair or true or accurate to say just because marijuana is legal, it's okay. No, it can put you under the influence. And if it's causing you to be unable to parent correctly, unable to provide adequate supervision, unable to change your infant's diaper and they get diaper rashes all the time, or unable to feed your three-year-old child because you're sitting on the couch or you're passed out drunk, that all can be considered, and just because it's legal doesn't mean it's okay. Child custody and visitation, substances, just because it's legal doesn't mean it's okay. You cannot abuse substances, even if they're legal or prescribed, to an extent that they start impairing your life and your ability to provide a safe, healthy atmosphere to raise your children or to be around children. And if you do, then the court absolutely can and many times will step in to amend the child custody and visitation orders to ensure that the kids are safe. That could be ordering drug tests, that could be ordering breathalyzers before you start your car, that could be ordering on-demand random drug tests before visitation. There are so many things that the court could do. It could be supervised visitation, no alcohol during your time with the child, not even a glass of wine or a sip, nothing, no pot 12 hours before. There's a huge amount of orders that the court can make if they find this. So simply saying it's legal, so it's okay, isn't really the answer. Now, this is part one, and we're going to get on to part two. So join me. Tell me your stories. I want to hear if you are the parent that had to fight and defend against drug allegations, or if you're the parent that's trying to prove without any satisfaction or how you did it that your child's other parent is using drugs. I'm super interested in this. I think the more stories we can share, the better it will be to really help parents not only prove substance abuse if it's necessary for the safety of their children, but also for parents that are using it recreationally, like they go to a winery on a Saturday night to have a glass of wine, that they aren't really what the laws are aimed at and they're still safe and healthy. Next time on part two, we're going to go on and talk about some of the very famous people we know that have lost custody as a result of their substance abuse. And we'll dive into the laws just a bit more. Thanks for tuning in to Gavels Down Voices Up. Like what you heard? Then don't just sit there. Subscribe, share, and tell me your thoughts. I'm Rachel King, bringing not just my opinions to the mic, but about the courtroom too. Your part, keep listening, keep engaging. And until next time, let's keep those gavels down and our voices up, unmistakably up.